All right, should be good to go. Uh, this week, we're going to be looking at flow analysis. My goal today is to talk about uh, flow inside closed bodies. So it'd be like pipes, vessels, um, arteries, all those different kinds of things. And then on Wednesday, we'll look at uh, open flow. So that would be things like wings and boats and all the different kinds of stuff. So there's two basic types of simulation you can do in SOLIDWORKS. The first one is the closed, so the interior flow. The second one is the open or the exterior flow. So we'll spend a little bit of time today talking about each of those. And then on Wednesday, we'll talk about the other one. So anyone have any questions before we get started? I also want to note that uh, I'd like to get in contact with each of you to for your molds for project three. So send me an email with uh, your availability for the week and we'll have a time to get your molds fabricated and then poured. If you want to do that in urethane or silicone, or if you want to use something else, then let me know um, in that email. Sound good? I'll assume that it does. <laughs> All right. Uh, so download this uh, sprinkler example. It says L12 pipes. And then open that up in SOLIDWORKS. And we'll go over some of the basics of setting up a flow simulation inside the SOLIDWORKS software. Uh, this is just a part that has several different configurations. So there is just a pipe by itself. There is a, a kind of a version of this that has several openings. And then there's also a version that has a restriction, basically a much smaller hole at the type, top of each of the pipes. So you can see that as I toggle between each of those. So we'll start off with the simplest configuration here. And we'll look at a flow simulation, just some modeling of the pressure drop through the pipe as a function of different flow velocities and stuff like that. So good? Anyone need a few more minutes to get this part kind of opened up? No. All right. So if I'm going to do an internal flow analysis, the first thing I need to do is I actually need to have uh, closed bodies. So I have to have an internal void inside of a, a part or a combination of parts. It doesn't have to be a singular part, but it can be anything that is going to have some kind of void in the middle of it. To make it easier to see, I'm going to go to a section view. So I'm just going to cut this in half so I can see the inside of the pipe. And then I'm also going to add caps or lids on the kind of the entrance and the exit of this pipe to be able to see what's going on in that. So I'm going to go to tools, create lid. See right here. So actually, let me back up a little bit. Um, in add-ins, you want to turn on flow simulation. So if you don't have flow simulation turned on, go ahead and turn that flow simulation on. And then you should see this flow simulation tab. And then inside the flow simulation tab, you should have tools and then lids. Dr. Laura? Yeah. Uh, th these are at like... I didn't hear the last part of that sentence. Can you say it again? Uh, do we have this in the student package? The flow simulation? Yeah. I'm not sure. You have it on yours? Oh, yeah, the borrower says he has it on his, so you should be able to use it. Are you not seeing the option for flow simulation? No, I'm not. It, it's not letting me pick the option for simulation. Does it give you an error? No, it's just it's gray. It's just gray. So it looks like the inspection one on yeah. here? Yeah. Um, you may not have included it when you installed your current copy of SOLIDWORKS. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know, Eduardo's got it on his, he's on his laptop. So okay. I'm assuming that that's a you problem. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just have to download it from the website. Yeah, you may have to go into your, your installation manager um, and then kind of look at it and install it or come to campus and do it if you want to do it from, from campus. Um, you also go on the virtual lab if that's going to be faster. We're not doing anything that's going to be a lot of kind of clicking. So most of this is going to be setting things up, putting in yeah. parameters, and then waiting. Um, yeah. So it won't be too terrible on the virtual lab just because it's not that many clicks. Uh, I don't know, Pedro, are you having the same issue or different issues or no? I probably just don't have it downloaded. Um, it's not on my SOLIDWORKS on the laptop. 
but it's most likely on the SolidWorks on the on campus. I mean, I know it's on SolidWorks on campus. You guys should not have left. You should have stayed here to, uh, you know, participate in the lecture. Um, you can always, I'm recording this, so you can always go back to it and look at it after the fact. Anyways, once I've got the slow flow simulation turned on, I want to cap the ends of the pipe. So I'm going to go into tools, create lids. Very straightforward. I click on the, the surface that I want to close up. If I want to change, I can change the thickness of this to make it whatever I want. So if I want to make it 0.1 inches thick, um, it's just making a solid body. It has to have some thickness. It doesn't really matter what that thickness is. Um, so depending on what you're looking at, if you need to make it thinner, make it thinner. If whatever the default gives you doesn't matter for what you're trying to simulate, then just leave it at the default. And I can click on OK. I've got a lid on that side. I'm going to come to the opposite side. You can go the same thing, tools, create lids. Click on that surface. This one, you know, it's really thick along that way. So I'm just going to leave it as the default. And now what I have is I actually have three bodies. I have my pipe. And then I also have the two lids. Right? And those are all actually features inside the part. So I can toggle those just like I would um, in, my con in my configurations where they're suppressed or unsuppressed in different configurations of the part. The next thing I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do a, a wizard to create the flow simulation on here. Um, I use the wizard and flow simulation because I don't use it as much as I use like finite element analysis. And so to save myself kind of memory space, it's easier to use the wizard. So whenever you're using a simulation tool that you're not you know, familiar with the various setup operations for that, then I would suggest using the wizard. So in this case, I'm going to use the wizard. And it's going to say, what project do you want for the which name do you want for the project? I'm just going to call this like a uh, sprinkler. Hit next. It doesn't really matter what system units that I use. So use whichever unit system you feel comfortable with. Um, I'll use SI just for the sake of it. It's nice liters and kilograms are kind of nice. Meters are kind of big and seconds are kind of small. So some of the units like Pascals end up being a little bit of a pain, but for the most part, it works fine. And then here's your big option in terms of the simulation. There's two kind of diagrams on the left that show you the two different configurations. Do you want internal analysis or external analysis? We're setting this up as flow through a pipe. So it's an internal analysis. If we wanted to do flow around the outside of a body, that'd be the external analysis. And so you can see here, this is like flow through a pipe with some walls. And this is flow around a, a, a cylinder or a sphere or something. So we're gonna do an internal flow. I also want to include gravity. So I'm going to click on gravity. Whenever you include gravity, the default is to put the gravity in the Z direction. Um, in this case, I want the height of this last portion of the pipe to actually go in the Y. So have that be upwards. And you see it visualizes gravity as an arrow kind of in the background here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to make the Y component as negative 9.81. And I'm going to make the Z component zero. I'm going to uncheck that rotation component because I don't want that. And then it'll show me as having the gravity going down. Um, all the defaults that it gives you inside here are going to be like standard temperature pressure. So when you go to specify like a pressure or something like that, it's going to default as atmospheric pressure. So if you don't know atmospheric pressure for whatever units you're in, as you go to add something, that's probably going to be default. Now, in Pascal's, your atmospheric pressure should be um, 101,000 pascals or 101 kilopascal. Um, but we'll see that here in a second. So I'm just going to add gravity again in the Y correction. If you want to do other things on here, you can. Um, again, you can do combinations of flow simulation with stress simulation with thermal simulation. And that's what a lot of these options are. It's like, do you want to look for conduction, convection, those kinds of things? Um, and honestly, I don't trust the results from flow simulation enough to necessarily want to do some of those more complex analyses, but if I used it more often, then maybe I would have enough knowledge to get that kind of worked out and trust it a little bit more. I'm going to leave that as it is. And then for the flow here, I'm just going to look for water. I'm going to come down here. I'm just going to say water. Uh, this is gases. Sorry, I don't want gases. I want liquids. So I'm just going to scroll down through my liquids till I find water. I'm going to double click on that. It's going to add water to my list of project fluids. And then there's options here. Do you want laminar and turbulent, or do you want 
turbulent only or laminar only. Um, most of the time you're going to want to leave this as laminar, laminar and turbulent. Um, but if you don't want one of those, like you want to force laminar flow, if you want to force turbulent flow, you can do that. Uh, it's going to calculate which one it thinks is most appropriate based off the flow in the different sections of the pipe if you leave it as laminar and turbulent. So again, I, I don't know necessarily a situation why you would want to force it to use one versus the other, but if you want to, you can. Maybe it's part of a simulation you're doing, I don't know. I'm gonna hit next. And then it says here, I can hit wall conditions. You know, do you want the wall to be rough? Um, this is in micrometers, right? So this is, uh, you know, a thousandth of a millimeter. Um, you know, I can add some roughness to this. That's just gonna change the kind of the drag coefficient along the surface of the, uh, the wall, the interior portion uh, of the pipe or whatever it is you're simulating. I've got big pipes here. Um, one of the reasons that I'm not great at this, I don't do a lot of fluid analysis. And so a lot of times the values that I pick for roughness and flow rates and stuff like that are not super realistic. And so a lot of times I don't get good results. If you know what your input and output conditions are, you'll probably get better results than we're doing here in these generic diagrams. Um, and if you have things that you wanna look at, you know, I can use those as examples for future conditions, just let me know. So just put something there. You can leave it at zero if you really want to. And then there's also different pressures. So do you want atmospheric pressure? Do you want temperature? Most of these you're gonna leave as the default most of the time. But if you wanted to have you know, a different atmospheric pressure or something like that, you could do that. That's the last of the options. Do you have any questions on any of those? All right, so I'm gonna hit finish. What I'm just gonna do is gonna make my uh, flow analysis study inside this flow analysis tab in my workspace. So there's the actual model here, go all the way to the right, and you might not see it depending on how big you have this window. So if I have this kind of shrunk a little bit, I've got these buttons that I can squish over to get to the flow analysis. And that's where the flow analysis is kind of hidden. I don't know why SOLIDWORKS puts some of the things here at the top and some of the ones here at tabs at the bottom. Just, it's a quirk, um, but that's where it's gonna end up being. That's all global settings for the simulation. Now we have to specify what the local settings are and the local settings are primarily the boundary conditions of the flow analysis. And this is, looks, works just like boundary conditions inside a stress analysis in that you need to have kind of one We'll call it like fixture and one load. Typically, you have a, a pressure or a pressure differential, or you have a pressure and a flow rate. Um, typically, you don't have multiple flow rates because then you have some undefined constraints inside there, but you can have an outlet flow rate uh, and an inlet pressure or some combination of those things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use an inlet flow rate and an outlet pressure. And we're gonna see kind of okay, what would the velocity of this fluid be at the outlet given these conditions. Does that sound good to everybody? I guess it doesn't matter, I'm gonna do it anyways. All right, so coming to boundary conditions, I'm gonna insert a new boundary condition. This is where we're gonna do most of your constraints. So I'm gonna satisfy a mass inlet flow. And I'm just going to do one kilogram per second. That's a liter per second. It's pretty fast. Um, now that's probably reasonably comparable to how you fast you might like pump gas at a gas station, or if you had a hose that was just opened and free flowing from your yard, probably something close to that, right? And we can change this to whatever we want. And then the surface is going to dictate kind of where that inlet goes. You want it to be on the inside of your part. Very important. You can't specify a inlet flow on the exterior faces of the part. It has to be one of these interior faces. And most of the time it's gonna be on one of your lids that you use to close the part off. Um, unless you just made the part, you know, just having internal voids without having to use the lids feature, which is an option. So again, that's a mass flow of one kilogram per second from the face. And it's gonna be a uniform flow. The uniform is down here. And you can see it shows kind of a visualization of that inlet flow from that boundary constraint. 
And then I'm going to come over here to the opposite side and I'm going to specify that I want this to be at some environmental pressure. So I'm going to say that the uh, new boundary condition at this surface is at environmental pressure, right? So this space is at environmental pressure. I have the same options here. So you have flow at openings, pressure openings, and then you also have a wall constraint. So you can say like, I want this wall to have certain constraints. The wall constraints are mostly used for thermal analysis or to specify a specific roughness of a surface. Um, so you have this ROZ, the surface roughness. If you wanted to change the surface roughness of a specific surface inside the simulation, like you wanted one roll to be rougher than the rest of them, then you could use that, right? Um, so I'm just going to set environmental pressure of this far wall to an atmosphere, which is that 101 kilopascals. So now I've got two constraints. I've got one inlet flow, and then I've got an outlet which has a known pressure. So what it's going to do is it's going to calculate how much pressure I need at the inlet and throughout the entire pipe to achieve that flow rate with that pressure, given the head height and the gravity and the density of the fluid and all the other jazzy stuff. Yeah. So it's going to be on the inside. So it's in the inside face. So all of the um, constraints that we're adding are going to be on the face that is touching the void or the inside of the part. If you put it on the outside of the part, they don't do anything. They might as well not be there. It's a good question. Once I've got those set up, I'm going to go ahead and run. I recommend that whenever you're doing a fluid analysis, always run new calculations. Because if you change something, you need to run a new calculation. The continued calculation is really only if something doesn't finish inside the simulation, and you want to kind of pick up where you left off, which is most of the time um, for relatively simple models, you don't, you don't need to bother with that. So I'm going to do solve, new calculation, mesh is checked because I have to mesh because it hasn't been meshed yet, and then I'll hit run. It's going to take it a few seconds to run through this. It may give you errors. The most common error that um, I see is turbulence at the exit where you have got some vortexing. And that means that it wants to have some inlet flow at one of the outlet openings that you've specified. Um, and that's usually because you've got some constriction of flow somewhere in the model and you have like some jetting kind of thing where it's not able to expand the flow back out um, to the remainder of the part. And we'll, we'll look at another example here in a few minutes. Um, but that kind of is the effect that happens. Also, while this is running, I'll note that I don't have to specify that that outlet pressure is atmospheric. I can make it whatever I want. So if I wanted it to be five atmospheres or uh, 32 PSI or whatever, I can specify anything there. And it's just going to calculate it with that being the pressure across that face that I selected. Um, so it's actually done now. The solver is finished. No warnings, well, that's good. So I should be able to go ahead and close this. You notice it doesn't pop up any results by the default. So when I run like a, a thermal analysis, or not, not thermal analysis, when I run a stress analysis, it automatically kind of gives me some plots to look at. Um, inside this one, we don't get default plots, but I'll show you all a couple of different plots that I find to be the most useful. And they're pretty similar to the same kind of plots you would use for um, your, your stress analysis. So the first one I like is the flow trajectories. So I'm going to insert a flow trajectory. I'm going to start off with a surface. So it says planes, faces, sketches, edges, contours. If you want specific points, like you want to do like an ISO flow line, you can specify like which ones to start. Usually the surface works fine. And then there's also kind of a number of points you want. Um, 20 is a lot for a small object like this. Maybe let's do 10. And you'll kind of see what this looks like in here in a second. Um, and then there's all kind of some standards here for how you want this to look and what do you want it to show. So in this case, I'm going to have it just show me pressure as colors on the arrows. And then it's also going to show me a length of the arrow. The length of the arrow will be a function of the speed of the flow. So I'm clicking on OK. It generates all of these arrows. And you can see here that my pressure 
inside the pipe is pretty much constant as it goes down the length of the pipe. It changes quite a bit here as it, the flow kind of turns that corner. And then the pressure actually decreases as I go up and approach my exit. Um, why my pressure is not at atmospheric at the exit, I'm not sure. Because it should be 101 uh, kilopascals right here at the exit. Interesting. Um, the thing I can do with this is I can play this out and it'll actually animate the arrows as you can see the flow going through the pipe and kind of it flowing around that corner and up and out. I'm gonna hide that real quick. Just not ignore it. And I'm not sure. Yeah, my environmental pressure should be 101 pascals at a mass inlet rate. Pressure potential. And I think it may be using the total um, uh, pressure potential, which is the, the kinematic and the pressure components. I may just want to have total pressure. Okay, uncheck pressure potential. I'm going to try to rerun this. So again, I'm going to run, I'm going to do new calculation run again. So I actually want it to be atmospheric pressure, but with some additional velocity and then some additional higher pressure at the inlet. And here the velocity should really just be equal to the mass flow rate divided by the area. So the velocity of the pipe should be fairly constant, which should show us that those, those arrows are more or less all the same length. So there it's done. I'm going to show that. There we go. So I just need to turn off that pressure potential option. And you can see here now my exit pressure is 101. You can see that my flow arrows are all pretty much the same length. When I play this, they're all moving at kind of the same speed. A little bit of variance as it goes through there, the corner. And I only have a little bit of additional pressure. So I'm, my inlet pressure is 107 kilopascals. So I only needed seven kilopascals of pressure to achieve that flow through the pipe. And most of that was not due to the length of the pipe. It was due to the height difference at the end. Some other things I can, I can do to see this, and I can have them all at the same time if I want to. Um, I can do these cut plots. So I think the cut plots work pretty good. I can pick any surface that goes through the part, decide what I want it to look like. So usually I use contours. And then what do you want to plot? So if I can do like the velocity. Here you can see that the velocity in the pipe is mostly constant. It's a little bit higher in the middle of the pipe. There's a velocity distribution uh, here at the end where I've got some of the corners where there's no effective velocity because it's kind of the way that the flow is moving around that part. And that's something you might use to optimize your design. Look at this, you know, you don't want to have that constriction. And so you have, you might put an elbow in that that has a gradual transition as opposed to having those sharp corners. Um, and look at some of those a little bit more in detail. I can also change that to be whatever I want. So if I don't want velocity, um, I can look at pressure or temperature or anything else, and it'll plot those out. I can also have as many of these if I want. So if I want to have one for pressure uh, and one for velocity, I can do them both. And then you just got to make sure you're not showing them both at the same time. So if I hide one and then show the other, you can toggle between the two. 
you can actually have more of them at the same time, but if they're on the same plane at the same time, it's only going to be able to show you one of them, right? So, um, you know, decide which ones you think are appropriate for what you want to look at. Any questions on that so far? So here I have two plots, right? So I inserted two cut plots, one showing pressure, one showing velocity, and I can show and hide the other ones to see what I want. So you can have multiple cut plots of different types and then toggle between them if you'd like. Oh, like when I wasn't getting the 101? Yeah, so on the environmental pressure here, there's this option for pressure potential, which is the total energy like inside the fluid at any given point, which is a combination of the height, the velocity, and the um, pressure. So I had that turned on, which meant that I was basically going to a even pressure potential rather than the just the atmospheric pressure at that point. So if you want just pressure and not a combination of those three, you've got to uncheck that. Otherwise, it's going to keep those things constant. All right, let's take a look at another variation on this. So I'm going to go, I'm just going to go straight to the constricted. You see that this one on here, the pressure drop is very, very small, right? If I show the constricting configuration, in this case, I'm going to go back to, so this is in configurations. You can kind of show the various configurations. This means just toggling back from one pipes back to restricted. In the restricted configuration, my lids, from the first configuration, since they didn't exist when I made this one, they don't exist on here. Um, so I'm going to make some new lids. I'm just going to tools, create lids. It's just more practice for us. I think I can do all these at the same time. So if you just click on all the faces, I don't want them to be that long, though. So I'm going to make them all 0.1 inches, make them a little smaller. They're just saving us some time by not having to click open and close. Just going to close off all those faces. Then I'm going to do largely the same simulation, uh, except for this time, really want to look at you. So I want to see, okay, if I have this set of sprinklers, am I going to get the same uh, mass flow rate out of all of them, you know, as a function of whatever my inlet flow is? So here, let's go into our wizard. I'm just gonna go back to the flow tab and do a new wizard. Next, I'm gonna use all the same properties as last time. So I'm just gonna make my gravity again in the Y direction. You have a little bit extra practice. Do liquids, uh, do water again. Oh, I wanted to add some roughness to this. I'm not sure what is the appropriate surface roughness. Really, it's a function of your manufacturing technique and the material you're using. Um, and I'm not sure how significant of an effect it has on uh, a flow of this geometry. Again, I'm going to use the section view so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to do this, the same thing. So I'm going to go to boundary conditions, insert boundary conditions. I'm going to start with a mass flow rate of one kilogram per second. Again, on my inlet. And then on my outlet, I should be able to specify a environmental pressure. I'm going to turn off that potential pressure, that partial pressure, uh, or pressure potential, sorry. And I should be able to select multiple faces on this. So I can actually go through and click each of these kind of one at a time. And so it actually adds that same condition to all five of those surfaces. So that's just kind of showing that I can expedite some of these things by sharing common conditions across multiple faces if that's part of the simulation you want to run. 
There's also, if you wanna measure things, which most of the time, if you're doing a flow simulation, you do. We have goals, which are kind of like the sensors in our finite element analysis for stress. So I'm gonna input a surface goal and I'm gonna use the same faces. Um, actually, I don't wanna do them all at the same time. I'm gonna do control for each surface, there we go. And I wanna find the uh, average velocity of each face. So here I already had all five faces selected still from my previous one. I'm gonna do a surface goal using velocity average for each face. I'm gonna do that again so you can all see that. So I had, I don't have them selected anymore, but under goals, you have global point surface volume equation. If I do surface, I can select the surface of my parts. So I get all five of those. Again, I'm getting the inside face. And you see this is a little hard to tell because I'm not zoomed in enough, but. All right, so there is the five faces. I want separate goals for each because I don't want it to calculate it as a sum of all those. So I want to look at them individually. And then I can get whatever I want here. So velocity, unit index, temperature, pressure, axial force, whatever it is you want to calculate. And then you want min, average, min, average, max, et cetera. Um, go through here. So in this one, what I did is I did velocity average. I don't want to do it again because I don't want the same goals twice, but just so you can all see that. Now I can run my analysis again. Get a new calculation. This one might take a little bit longer, but probably still not super long. And the purpose of this type of simulation would be like, so say I'm designing uh, as like a sprinkler system or a fluid delivery system. And I want to know if the diameter I have for this base pipe is large enough that the flow through that pipe results in more or less the same flow out of each of my little restricted areas. So those restrictions are going to create a, um, like a, a pressure differential because they're very small compared to the base pipe. And what I probably want for something like this is I want more or less the same volumetric flow and the same velocity out of each of the, the heads of the sprinkler system. And so when you're looking at like your irrigation system for your lawn, you usually have like a quarter inch uh, or a half inch PVC. And then your sprinkler heads are rated for a certain velocity or a certain volumetric flow at a certain pressure. And you can put those in series um, as long as the flow rate in the pipe remains a certain amount high enough to achieve the flow rate of the pressure head of the, of the sprinkler, because you won't have that much change in pressure along the length. So hopefully we'll see something similar to that uh, with this solution. So it's done. Uh, do, 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 do. Oh, I changed that. I didn't mean to change it. <laughs> so here are my rolls. Uh, sorry, my results. My results. I'm going to insert a goal plot. Just click all. Then you can show this in Excel. So this is the uh, average velocity, right, for each of the heads. And you can see that they're reasonably close to the same. There's some variance there, but they're not super far apart. And again, if you where you want to get like the bulk values out and you can export that to Excel. Um, and I can still come in here and I can look at my plots. So if I want to do a, you know, I like this one just because the visualization I think looks cool. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, arrows, arrows are too small. <laughs> um, let me edit the definition of this. Make the arrows bigger. Please. 
There you go, bigger arrows. Easier to see. So you can see the flow there. And really, because this flow out of the tip is so small, um, that differential coming in here is pretty significant. Uh, not sure. We should still see a 101 kilopascal at the exit point there. Um, we can see that our pressure, this is almost yellow, it's yellow across the entire bottom portion of the flow. So we're not seeing a significant pressure drop as I go through the length of the pipe. The velocity is getting lower, so it's slowing down, but we're not getting uh, a significant drop in pressure until we start going up the pipe. And then we also see a drop at the actual nozzle there. Um, I think I may have not checked that. No, I've got it without the pressure potential. It's not sure why I dropped below that 101 again. It really shouldn't have. This is why I don't trust the flow analysis. Does that make sense to everybody? Oh, yeah, I go through and just kind of uh, mess with some of those values. This flow rate is probably just very, very slow for the size of the pipe that I'm using. I'm good. All right, so I'm going to save that. And let's take a look at one more example. So I'm going to open. Uh, oh, sorry, if you haven't already done it, let's go to Canvas, download this Venturi, the SLDPRT. And then open that up in SOLIDWORKS. And then on the one that you do, you guys have this version of the file? Does it have the lids already on it? The lids are the lids already on it on the file. Yeah. Okay. So this one I already had the lids on it, um, but just to save time. And then I'm coming to the flow simulation. Uh, I'm just going to delete all these ones because I want to start over. So I'm going to say yes to delete all. So I right click on the flow and then I can delete it and then I can start over. And so I have the lids because the lids are part of the, uh, the part. And then I'm gonna do a new simulation. So I'm gonna go a new wizard and let me see if I can't get this to work the way I want it to. So I'm gonna use, I'll use Instagram a second this time just to show a different set of units. Um, this time I'm actually not gonna use gravity because I'm gonna use a non-compressible fluid and it's not gonna be that difference in that, not that much different in height. So it probably doesn't need to be included on there. And I'm gonna try and use air as my fluid. So I'm gonna add air to my list. Again, so just in gases, predefined air. And I'll leave this roughness at zero. And then here's my standard pressure temperatures. If you want to change those, you can. Turbulence parameters. And it's kind of the same thing we were at before. Uh, and what I want to try and see with this, I want to see if I can get a, a Venturi effect inside the simulation. Although I'll warn you guys in advance that I was not able to find a good combination of values that kind of gave me what I want out of this earlier uh, before the start of class. Um, but what we should see is that if we have a, a, an inlet here, as the uh, fluid flows through the pipe and it gets constricted, the velocity should increase and the pressure should go down, right? Um, and then as it goes to the outlet, the pressure may decrease. I think it's actually just going to make a little jet and then it's going to flow through. Um, but I think that's because I need to figure out what the appropriate values to use are. So that's fine. I'm going to boundary conditions. Same basic thing as before. What do I want to have as inlet and outlet? Um, so let's, let's try something a little bit different. Let's do inlet pressure. So we'll do a static pressure um, here at the opening. Let's say it's, I don't know, 100 PSI, pretty high pressure. 
And then at the outlet, let's try using another static pressure and see what it does. And run. So here I've just specified a pressure differential. It's saying my flow is supersonic. So that's probably bad. <laughs> I didn't think 100 PSI would give me supersonic flow. I mean, 100 PSI, it's not that high, right? But maybe it's just because the, uh, the, the distances I'm doing here are very small and the, the sizes are pretty big. So it's, it's popping, basically. Um, but we'll see what happens. Again, we look at our results, same as we did before. Um, I'll use the flow trajectories. This is kind of my favorite. You can use whichever visualizations you like. There's my pressure. You can see it starts off at 100. Uh, it's dropping down to one, one PSI. It's also continuing to go down as it goes through the pipe rather than going back up. So my guess is that this, the velocities here are just ridiculously too high. Um, let me do edit this. Let's look at velocity. Yeah, so velocity starts off low and then quickly increases and then continues to increase until it gets to the end of this kind of expansion area. It keeps going out. So because it's a compressible fluid, um, as it goes out of that exit, it can still expand and accelerate. So that's an expansion pipe inside of a, um, a nozzle. Really, I should have a parabolic here if I want an ideal expansion of gases inside this piece. Um, but this flow rate is just much too high. Let's try and lower our pressure differential and see if we get some more realistic results. Let's just try something small. Let's do uh, 15 PSI. Yeah, there's different goals I can add on to this as well. So if you wanna put your goal on the same surface as your boundary condition, so 15 down to 14.69. I'm gonna do a new calculation again. So we should see something more realistic there. We got a warning, but then it went away. And the warning, so this vortex, this warning here about the vortex, that basically just means that it expects to see non-uniform flow at the outlet. And therefore it's not sure that it's out, it's, Predictions are correct because it's not going to want to let flow back into the system uh, after that. So here you can see we have this reduction. We have this flow rate that starts off slow. It speeds up inside the throat and then it slows down as it exits. Let's do a, a, a surface plot for our pressures. Hey, thanks. So we'll just do a pressure plot. So here you can see the pressure starts off at close to 15. It actually goes down to below the 14, and then it comes back up. Again, a lot of this is kind of making sure you have values that are, are reasonable um, for it to give you good results. And it's not showing me my arrows because there's some kind of deflection of that path there. That's part of the kind of the turbulence of the system. Again, this is nice and you can animate them. You can kind of see what's happening. So there's kind of the Venturi effect where as the fluid comes in, it speeds up, the pressure goes down, and then as it expands again, it slows down and the pressure increases a little bit again. If I have the pressure differential too high, you know, it hasn't had enough time to depressurize by the exit. If it's too low, you know, you don't see the effect. But there we can see it reasonably, reasonably clearly. Questions on any of that? Anyone have any questions on kind of how to set up, visualize, export, kind of any of the options that you would want to do for fluid flow inside of closed chambers, or at least somewhat closed chambers, where you have just an inlet and an outlet and everything else is enclosed? No? 
You got a lot of questions? <laughs> All right. Um, well, it's not terribly difficult to set up. Again, I'm making up values here for like the pressure differentials and the, the volumetric flow rates for my inlets and for my outlets. Um, and so these results don't really mean anything to me. If you have a project where you want to do some kind of fluid analysis for senior design or for your design project for this class, um, you know, please let me know if you have any issues setting that up. All right, that's it for today. On Wednesday, we're going to look at a uh, flow around exterior members. So if you're looking for drag forces or, uh, you know, aerodynamics or hydrodynamics, then that'll be an interesting lecture for you. And if not, then hopefully we look forward to thermal analysis or something else that we're going to cover later in the semester. Only got a couple of topics left. See you all later. Enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, Dr. Laura.